pretty seemed like it was always, always in the blood uh, with my brother working uh, in the industry, sort of running the family. Um, I, you know, I did, I did work in banking and, and finance. I didn't really find it was for me, although I had fantastic experience, fantastic corporate experience. Um, property just seemed the, the, you know, the right thing. Uh, you know, it's everyone's aspiration to build in a big uh, portfolio of assets, you know, build residual income, capital growth, um, and, and, and so on. So, you know, it looked uh, appealing, incentivizing. I was able to grow and learn a lot about the industry. And, and ultimately, I saw opportunity uh, to grow within the industry, and this is why uh, I came into property. Carradine was about making a difference in housing in terms of social housing. Um, so, you know, the, the company was incorporated and, you know, it, it has a social mission. It's a profit-making business with a social purpose, uh, a, 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 with something that, you know, we, we have social impact. So what, what we do exactly is we work with local authorities, government-funded trusts and charities, and we house a whole uh, variety of, of tenants, including, you know, women who suffer domestic violence, street homeless, women with young children, um, you know, those on drug intervention programs who need help. So for us, housing is central because you need, you know, a stable uh, abode. You know, we, we, we used to house ex-offenders um, initially as well. So they needed a place to stay, a home, a roof over the head to, you know, to, 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 to mitigate the reoffending and, 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 and additional adverse uh, or adversities that people were facing. So once we're able to get them in, in, into some stable housing, we can then offer them some support and rehabilitation, training, back to work initiatives, uh, and so on. And we're, we're really proud because we've we've kept families together who you know who risked um, you know families risked their children being taken away. Uh, you know, you know we've saved people from from spending nights out on the street. Uh, so we're really proud um, of that, and we've been commended for what we've done as well, which is which is an honour as well. I mean, yeah, I've done a couple of training courses and, and stuff. This one, these ones here are for leadership and development training. Uh, one of them organised, I've also done a negotiation uh, course as well. They're organised by the MCB, Muslim Council of Britain, where they're, they're trying to inspire young leaders to lead, uh, you know, represent religion in the, in the right light. You know, when it comes to a contentious issue in the news, normally there's a big bearded guy coming, you know, being, you know, vile and so on. So they wanted academic, intellectual, young people who can come and represent in the right way uh, so they empower and engage with the youth uh, and also to lead, lead, lead the community, you know, lead in the workplace and so on. So there's a great course um, that, I, that I went on those as well. Uh, and the pictures, um, yeah, now these are just joyous uh, occasions where we've won different awards and stuff from our organisation. We've won uh, Making a Difference Award, Commitment to the Community, uh, best letting agents in the UK and stuff like that. So alhamdulillah, yeah, we've, we've got great um, accolades that, that we've worked hard for over the last, you know, five or six years. This is just a canvas that I, uh, I've created. It's just, it's, it's inspirational words, you know, that, that we like to live by and adhere to, you know, those things like tenacity and build, growth, which are all very important to us, ambition, dream. Just sometimes, you know, this is a challenging environment, very stressful at times, so you sometimes just need, you know, that inspiration, that positive energy, um, you know, the, the big picture, the long, the long term plan that you need to look into. So this brings it into perspective that this is our vision, basically. Before I had my first job, I, I had a small business. Um, so when I was 15, I used to buy and sell mobile phones. And this was at the time where there was the, the Nokia craze, you know, 3210, 3310, 8210, the banana phone, you know, uh, uh, it was a big, you know, not everyone had a mobile phone, so I saw an opportunity there. I used to buy and sell phones off the loot newspaper. This was even before eBay and Gumtree, uh, believe it or not. I'm not that old, but, you know, just to give you a little indication where it all began. As a child, uh, I wanted to be a footballer, uh, probably like every child um, growing up. I had a little bit of talent there, but um, it, didn't, it didn't happen. Um, for, for me, I didn't make any early conclusions as to you know what I wanted. To, you know, I was quite free, and, and, and I like to go with the flow and, and see where the opportunities are. The the mosque and the community played a huge part uh, in, in me growing up. Um, I was always very much involved in the community, and my best friends today are from uh, from the mosque and the, and the community. So there was a constant support from the mosque. I mean, I'm from Hadri Islamic Centre in South London, a great you know a great institution. 
and uh, you know, I was part of the madrasa, I was part of the, 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 the nursery. And, and the great thing was there was always an emphasis on education and progression. It's a very progressive mindset, which has helped me everywhere because it was about learning, it was about being positive, progression, you know, helping people, uh, and uh, just doing good generally. So the, definitely the community played a, played a huge part. Uh, in terms of the religion, of course, I am who I am because of my belief. I act the way I do. You know, especially all the good things I do, the bad things are probably my own downfall. But you know, any any positive inspirations, you know, I come from God, come from the Ahlul Bayt. These are the, the the things that have molded and, and, and shaped me, and they're, they're the values and principles that I live by uh, today. The mosque is 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 a, is a, is a great place. There's a, there's a there's a social aspect there as well as a religious aspect. Um, we come together regularly, so you know there is a there's a, there's a professional network there as well. You know, be it solicitors and lawyers and accountants. That and and the idea is it doesn't always happen, but where possible, you like to help each other out. Um, and even if you're not formally instructed, at least you can advise and guide. Uh, and that's really important in whichever community, Muslim, Hinduism, Ismaili. That's great nucleus to have where where the ethos is about helping each other progress. You want to see your brother do well and if you can help him with a contact, with a solicitor, you know, with any property advice, um, then, then certainly we, we definitely try to do that. If I'm honest, I haven't, I haven't given back enough uh, to the community. I haven't repaid um, them. Or, you, know, I, I, you know, I used to volunteer, uh, not much, li you know, a little bit. I've, I've been involved in sport a lot and I used to you know, organise football training sessions for the community. Uh, at the Saturday school, we, we developed a, well, I say we, they developed it, I've just helped out, uh, a professional development program for, you know, 14 to 17-year-olds, where in addition to teaching Islamic etika, Islamic history, Quran, uh, we developed a program uh, about professional development, so communication skills, presentation skills, CV, CV writing, um, you know, people who are helping them do their personal statement for UCAS, for university. So that is, that, is, that is great, so I, I've helped out a little bit there, but I haven't done enough, I need to do more, because I owe a lot back to the community, because you know, they invested in, in us, um, and, and we need to give back to our future generations and ki kids. Uh, and we're in, a, we're in a period now where the internet is certainly taking over, um, and we're losing that connection. You know, I was saying in Muharram we're active, in Ramadan we're active, but then it goes dead, you know? So, you need, you, no matter with internet, great, but you always need that face-to-face, -face, that interaction, that coming together, that, that, you know, the vibes and the energies. So, so that's, that's really important and we need to continuously engage. And, and sport is great um, as well because sport is, is great for social, socially bringing people together. It's, uh, it's health and well-being, you know, it's, 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 it's exercise, team sport. Uh, it's competition, and we should compete. We should go out there and play in FA leagues, and uh, and you know, and, and our, our communities will give birth to to professional sports people who we need more of uh, in the community because we've got our doctors, we've got our accountants, we need our, our media and our politicians uh, and and sports people. And, and why not? We want people to represent this religion in every single light. So no one can say we're tunneled vision, or we, you know, we we want to embrace every aspect of this society that we, we, we live in and progress within it. So I, I was involved in working with Migrant Help uh, where they were helping uh, migrants and refugees coming from Syria and via Greece and they were at an interim point here where the application for you know, a, a refuge was being uh, processed and, and they were living in hostels and so on so I, I helped out a little bit uh, there with, with other imams and priests they would go and just literally just, just be there to talk to someone, to offer some support um, and, and advice. Every, every, you know, it's, it's nothing really big, but it's every little small thing helps. It's a very small contribution, but if everyone puts a little small contribution in different ways, it, you know, there, there'll be a good magnified effect, hopefully. For me, I think the, in terms of investing into the community or, or giving back, I think we, we need to think differently. For me, it's, uh, you know, being in, being in business, it's about commerce or social enterprise, I feel like we should encourage employment and training and commerce, you know, why can't the mosque be a business, so to speak, or trade, you know, you know why can't we have a halal butchers or an insurance company or, you know, different things um, uh, like that, so I, I think it's a more, more of the same, but, you know, more emphasis for me, it's sport, it, it, it's business, but it's also knowledge as well in terms of learning, but there are different ways 
to learn. So you could have a, you know, I imam speaking down uh, and it works for some people and there's merit in that. And then you have the classroom style, you have, it, it, you know, around the circle. It, it all works, it's all positive and you need, you need more of it. So for, for me, yeah, it's youth engagement, it's empowerment and education, it's sport and, and looking at some type of commerce um, as well. Croydon is very, very important to us where our roots are, this is where we're established. Uh, we work very closely with the local authority and the local community. Uh, you know, it's had its challenges, but really great things are happening now. They're investing, Westfield, new developments, shops, hotels, everything. Uh, and, you know, we're still here. We've been here, you know, X amount of years. Um, but, yeah, I mean, we've been recognised because, you know, we've, you know, we've housed, you know, hundreds of uh, tenants who've been referred to us from local government. You know, women have suffered domestic violence, you know, women with young children, street homeless. A very niche, unique sort of time of clientele who needed help and assistance. So it wasn't just about housing, it was about rehabilitation, it was about support, back to work training, you know. Uh, so to be recognised for that is something that we're really proud of. This is uh, our collection of, uh, of awards, our recognition. You know, we've won the best service provider in the private rented sector. Uh, we've got the commitment to the community, uh, in the Croydon community, two years running. Uh, and that's for helping and housing you know, numerous different types of uh, individuals. Uh, we've got the Estes Awards, we won those a couple of years running as well, so we've got recognised by our tenants uh, for being the best across the UK. Um, so we've got silver, I think it was 15, and we got the gold in 2016, so that was a great achievement for us um, as well. We, we won some of the smaller awards as well, and the best letting agency to work for in the UK, we got silver award for that. Sunday Times, Zoopla, so they're good recognised awards as well, so I'm going that. But yeah, you know, the hard graft, you know, this thing looks pretty and nice here, but that's years and years of you know, putting all the dedication in, customer service, helping tenants, housing, building, developing, you know, so like Islam is, is, is very important to me, central to, to what I do. I'm a Muslim in a normal British society, I'm integrating, I'm, you know, I'm, I have mutual respect for my colleagues and my peers. Uh, it's challenging at times, especially when there is a lot of scrutiny uh, on, on the religion. But I think we have to be who we are. You know, we're, we're positive people. You know, the, you know, there will always be those who will use the minority uh, uh, you know, as, as the poster. But, you know, people who do things in, in, in our name uh, do not represent the majority. And that's what we have to portray. So I think everyone has to be who they are. And we have to portray for who we are in the society, in the community. Um, so, so, that, so that's really, really important. In terms of religion, for, for me, of course, it's so important. You know, I, I had the upbringing where I've had to, you know, go to the mosque, to fast, to pray. And at times, you know, when you're young, you don't really know why you're doing it or you, you're doing it ritually. However, you know, it embeds it in your heart, you know, and, and then, you, you know, you, you grow and you develop. And then you realise why um, you, you, you're doing it. Working as, as, as a Muslim, I, think, I don't think I've had any challenges uh, as such. There may be some prejudices, but look, at the end of the day, everyone can't like and love everyone. There's going to be some, you know, can't have perfect harmony, although that would be nice. But, you know, it, there will be some prejudices, perhaps, but I haven't faced any. Uh, working and, and look, I, I like to just put my cards on the table. I am who I am. I, I don't like to hide away from it, or sh you know, I like to understand who they are. And I, the key is respect. You see, if if I respect someone for who be it be it whichever religion, be it uh, an atheist, it doesn't really matter because they're a human being. So you know, for us, there's a difference between tolerating someone and respecting someone. Sometimes we just tolerate them. They're just there. I just have to put up with them, but. For us, what's important is to respect, and you build mutual respect. If I show respect to someone, they will show respect to me, uh, you know, and hey, off you go. Sometimes, uh, in busy environments or stressful environments, you know, sometimes you can't get to the mosque, you know, and it's not acceptable, but that is the overlap or the compromise in terms of working and being a Muslim. Uh, it's a challenge uh, at the end of the day. I think you have to do your obligations, your minimum wajibat and your obligations, um, for me, working hard is, is the ultimate obedience to God as well. That is a fundamental part of the religion. I'm not going to sit around, you know, I need to go and earn a crust, I need to look after my family. For me, that's, that's obedience and submission to God. But, of course, if we end up now missing prayer time or, or, or 
you know that is you have to you have to just try and it's about balance uh, at the end of the day you know too much of anything you 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 tilt the scale but a good balance generally in life with family with mosque with work is is what we desire easier said than done you know sometimes you see me pulling out my hair um ha ha at work but it, you know the 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 vision is there for that i take a lot of inspiration from from the holy prophet and his family the ahlul bayt um you know it, it, being on imam saint tb any Anything to do with Imam Hussain is an honour and, and is a pleasure um, to do. And, and there's so much inspiration. In terms of Imam Hussain, there's so much to take. We talk about Karbala being a university of lessons, and it is. Because just from one action or one moment or you know, one stance him or his family or his companions have taken, that is a life lesson that you can take, be it resilience, be it forgiveness, you know, be, be it integrity. You know, and what I'm saying was he stood for what was right. It didn't matter whether he was, uh, you know, his family were going to be compromised. Everything. It didn't really matter. He stood by what was right, and, and I think that's that. You know, uh, again, it's easier said than done, but that is the the inspiration to aspire to. Definitely. I went to Karbala in in 2011, my first time, and uh, I remember it vividly because. Uh, you know, we it was it was wild. You know, we were in Baghdad Airport and in Christmas Day and New Year's Day. It was that December period. Um, but the you know, I've, I've never been to 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 a place like that. It's just I can't really explain or describe it. But the energy, the power that you, you felt there, the strength is is is, is unbearable. Um, it's, it's it's unbelievable. You know, and and going to Najaf and Karbala and Najaf is a, is a completely different. You know, uh, aura. It's very calm, very peaceful, very relaxing. It's it's, it's beautiful. Uh, Karbala is heavy on the heart, and it's, it's it's you know it is is there's so much emotion there. But you know, you you go there and you feel strong. You know that is you, you feel strong. You feel your prayers are answered. You feel like things are put into perspective for you um, as well. And and if I get the chance to go as much as possible, I'd I'd love to do that. My inspiration, of course, my parents inspire my, me, my older brother, but ultimately my inspiration comes from, uh, you know, the Ahl al-Bayt. And, and if, I, you know, if I pick out one person who inspires me, I think Imam Ali alayhi salam is, is, for me, is a, is a pinnacle of inspiration. Of course, the Holy Prophet as well, no doubt, that was his teacher, you know. So nothing being taken away from there, but just looking at Imam Ali's life, I mean, in this day and age, you have to be strong in different areas and do different things. He was a warrior on the battlefield. At the same time, he was a compassionate husband. He was a role model uh, of a father. He was, uh, he was a, a, a just leader, you know? Um, and there's, there's, a, you know, there's, there's this one image I see of him after, you know, after many, many years of, of whatever happened where he comes and they're pleading to him to come and take the lead. And he says, you know, it doesn't mean anything to me unless I can bring justice. And he comes and he says, I'm on a mule and I've got two pieces of cloth. You know, that's me. If I leave with anything more than this, I've betrayed you. You know, I'm not here for anything. Our world leaders today can take inspiration from this because everyone is here for different things. But when someone is there to serve, and that's, that's just a, an, an, an absolute inspiration. Um, to be, I mean, my my dream would, you know, I would love to be a, a you know, a UN peace diplomat of, of of some kind, and you know, and, and why not? There's so much hatred and animosity around. Why? Because there's a there's a gap. The gap needs to be bridged. We need to come together. The people need to speak. You need to seek win wins because at the moment you're killing each other. You're sad. You know, there's poverty. Or there could be an opportunity for trade for commerce, for ha harmony, for unity, for brotherhood, for sport, for everything. But there's a, there's a gap, so we need to, to, to bridge that gap. But, you know, coming back to Imam Ali, that's why he was the ultimate leader. He, he encompassed everything, you know, from strength, from, you know, uh, uh, you know, from physical strength to emotional strength. But ultimately, you know, his goal was uh, uh, his spiritual relationship with God. You know, and that was it for him. Uh, and again, that's the, the aspiration for us to, to, to get to, inshallah. The three pieces of, uh, the piece of advice I can give, uh, you know, for me is, so number one is, is you know, is, stand, is to work hard, you know, is, is to give it your absolute 
all. Don't, don't fall short on anything. Aim high. You want to be the best. You want to be the best in the industry. You want to be the best sportsman. You want to be the best in class. Whatever it is, aim for the, for the best. But that comes with hard work and ethic. And that in the religion as well. So if you want to, you know, be the, if you want to understand the Quran, you have to read it. You know, and this is advice for me. Uh, uh, and this is what I'm trying to adhere to, which is you have to read it. You have to struggle. You have to learn. You have to read. You have to spend time. Um, you know, so, so, so that's that. Um, and being honest, uh, I, I think, you know, you have to just be, be, be honest. God can see your heart, right? And, you know, people can also see. You know, you can see, so you can see right through people. Your behaviour will transcend, uh, you know, across and people will realise. So just, you know, be, be straightforward, you know, be, be honest. Uh, do things for the right reason and our religion is about intention as well. You get rewarded for good intention. You know, do things for the right reason. Um, and finally, I think just, just chill, really. Uh, be happy, you know, life's short, enjoy, you know, laugh, uh, uh, spend, you know, just chill. <laughs> the society is all about helping each other. You know, as I was young, I was growing up, I was given an opportunity and I was helped. We're now giving back and if that cycle continues, then you know the next generation and the community progresses. So that's very important, um, to, you know, to be given opportunity and to also give opportunity. Uh, I think when we talk about mentors and mentees, that's very important. I think everyone is either a mentor or mentee at some stage. There should always be someone that you're aspiring to or that's helping you and guiding you, someone that you're looking up to. But then there's always someone younger as well, albeit a child, but someone who. And, and, and you know that mentoring may just be about love and comfort and, and feeding at, at, at a certain stage, but could develop into a more teacher, educational guidance role uh, as well. So that's that's very important. Um, in terms of what we do in housing, again we we've found a model where we're a profit-making business, but we also have a social in, uh, you know social compass, and we have we, we have social impact. So we're doing a good thing while also making a profit. Uh, you know, and why not? So I've had many opportunities, you know, to make money unethically, um, and it just doesn't feel right, you know. And then that, you know, they say that money will never do anything for you. So this for us is is is, is perfect because we're, we're you know we're helping people who are in need, um, and you know people who are in, you know dire need um, of of housing. There is a charitable element. Um, and as a property or letting company, we probably go um, an extra mile where we don't really need to. But again, you know, sometimes your heart takes over and you want to help that little bit further. Um, and we're, we're working on creating a model whereby we can have uh, um, support services and charitable services to, to interlink into our, our property company, whereby you have tenants who require housing, which is what we provide. And then you have a, a you know a charitable arm, or you know we have a not-for-profit arm, uh, which is a social enterprise which looks to support and to train and empower and get people back to work and back onto their feet um, as well. And I mean I didn't come up with this. I, I work with this organisation. Uh, I contribute towards it. Um, but yeah, for me it, this is what our religion teaches as well to to help others. There's nothing stopping you from. Working hard, you know, being successful, running a, a, a you know big uh, organization, and if there are if there are good can come out from it, <laughs> all the better. If anything, that should be a prerequisite as well. Um, so may, you know, many big companies now have social impact funds that they want to give back to the community. Sometimes, you know, I'm not here to question anyone's motives, but they may not be the right, you know, uh, motives. But it's positive impact again, g g giving back. Uh, and that's, that's what we do, and we're, we're, we're proud of that. We, we deal with a, a whole range of you know, very uh, unique cases uh, of people who, who need help. You know, we've had, like I say, women who have suffered from domestic violence, who are fleeing from a violent partner, uh, who have you know, no support, who need to move out of the area very quickly um, for the safety of their life. Um, you know, we've had arson attacks uh, from, from previous... From, uh, from previous partners, so and that's challenging because you're dealing with, you know, a lot of times, you know, we own a lot of stock, but we also deal with stock on behalf of landlords. So it's very sensitive on our, on our, you know, we're very conscious to keep a professional 
you know, an excellent service towards our landlords and all of our, our stakeholders. And there are many times where we're ch faced with some challenging um, situations. Our stance is always, you know, we put it on the table to our landlords that there could be challenges, but know that if there is something, we will address it, you know, straight away and promptly, uh, you know, and forcefully um, as well. So that you know, a lot. Of, I mean, we've seen. You know, we we've got great staff here. We uh, you know, a lot of our staff they come in hungry. Um, you know, they haven't eaten. One, you know, one of our this is not nothing to do with us. This is our staff. They they've bought little you know soup packets. And as soon as the tenant comes and he says, I haven't eaten in three days. I'm cold and I'm hungry. Uh, you know, and these are non-Muslim, right? Hey, it doesn't. You don't need to be a Muslim to behave like that because that's humanity. And they make them soup. And and you know, this is what I mean that we go that extra mile. And and. This is why we have been um, commended for our work in, 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 in the community, for these, these very, very reason, reasons. You know, a, a lot of our staff, uh, we've donated clothes, for example, suits and shirts to our tenants. So a lot of them who want to get back to work don't have shirts and suits to go to interviews. So, uh, you know, we've donated suits. Uh, we're, you know, we're, and again, it's just that positive contribution and giving back to the society and community uh, which is what we what we try to do every day.